Australian National University uh, has a proud and long history, and that history is closely associated with uh, Papua New Guinea. I'm an alma mater of the University of Papua New Guinea, and we in our own school know very much the role the Australian National University has continued to play and provide. And I want to say, as a former UPNG student, and possibly a student again in the not too distant future, I want to say thank you very much for the role ANU has played in partnering the premier University of Papua New Guinea. Thank you, ANU. The partnership between ANU and UPNG existed prior to independence and has continued up till this point in time. Various formal and informal uh, arrangements have been made between various faculties as well as schools and countless academic studies and exchanges has been going on and this has run successfully year in year out for the last six decades. Recently ANU and UPNG entered into formal arrangements within the ANU Crawford School and uh, today I get that the Crawford School is hosting this event uh, with the UPNG School of Business and Public Policy and the exchange that continues to run between ANU Department of Pacific Affairs and UPNG School of Humanities and Social Sciences through the Pacific Research Program and I want to appreciate not just today's program but the depth of data history and, and, and everything that you have collected since we, you started the program with UPNG six decades ago. These arrangements will ensure that practical collaboration between our two schools, both eminent, uh, ANU very eminent in not just Australia but the entire Pacific and the region, as well as your own global uh, reputation and also your continued help to our University of Papua New Guinea. And I want to say thank you again. Your uh, annual economic surveys, for instance, your election database, for instance, if you think we don't read your data and statistics as a politician, I have deep interest in additional credible statistics from outside who have no interest in local politics, but more importantly, facts that are coming through. So thank you very much for all those, all those data that come through. Your budget assessments, your research on the Pacific portal, research portal, and every other programs that ANU has collaborated with local researchers, UPNG, our NRI, and our own various government departments. I just want to appreciate the collaboration that has been going on for some time. You, perhaps in your research ability, know about Papua New Guinea better than myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any case, let me give you some uh, refresher. A uh, nation today possibly is a nation of 10 million people, my note says. I would assume it's 12 million. Yeah. Later this year, we're doing a uh, full in-depth uh, census. I have ministers assisting me, uh, Minister Treasury, Minister Planning uh, in the House, Minister Foreign Affairs. Uh, they will not send me to retire our long outstanding census this year. We will establish exactly what our population is, but key statistics nonetheless remain the same. Our nation is the most diverse nation on planet Earth. Over 800 languages, all of them have their own tribal cultural setup and structure, their own local governance structures, their own cultural expectations and worldview. And so to fuse them into a modern, uh, modern nation has never been an easy task. But we've managed to hold forth as a robust democracy 49 years on. In that diversity, we also have Apart from ethno-linguistic diversity, we have biodiversity. Both our terrestrial ecosystem as well as marine ecosystem is second to none. We believe we have 7% of world's known biodiversity, so you would assume our per capita biodiversity is second to none on the face of planet Earth. So to the, to the ethno-cultural diversity as well as biodiversity, Senator Conroy, second to none. You're investing in the right place. You're investing in the right place. And so sit on top of this one, we are straddling in between an exciting part of planet Earth. It is peaceful right now, and we'd like to maintain peace forever. When you look in the context of global uh, conversations, there can be no better place to live than our Pacific, uh, Pacific habitat. But PNG straddles in between Indo-Asia as well as the Pacific. 
and we find ourselves in this place and we take our place seriously and we take the opportunities that come with it also seriously. And so I'd like to say, uh, in the context of where we place, uh, uh, where we are straddled, uh, we take our responsibility as a democracy very seriously to ensure we remain uh, an active buffer in the presence of the confluence of many interests, confluence of commerce, confluence of trade, confluence of uh, uh, a world that is increasingly socializing on the platform of social media and now the emergence of artificial intelligence gives us more uh, concern as well as opportunities for us to harness and capitalize on. But the backdrop to where PNG is today has never been easy. I spoke at the parliament and last night I also spoke lightly. And we started off from a very awkward place. In 1975, our economy was under five billion. And I'm, I run the risk of being appraised by you academy, <laughs> academians. You do your research, I may be wrong. You do your research and I speak in total confidence that you will be researching my statistics. <laughs> and so 1975, we were an economy under five billion kina. At today's value, US dollar or Australia, uh, Australian dollar for the matter, easily we were still under one billion dollar. And so that is the place we started off from. Our land mass, I spoke at Parliament today, bigger than UK, bigger than Japan, bigger than New Zealand to give you some context. In that big land mass, we're not as flat as what you have in UK. For those who visit UK, we have high mountains, tropical mountains, as well as sub alpine snow capped mountain in the highest peak in Mount William. We have swamps, we have valleys, we have big rivers. We have islands and we have atolls. Islands and atolls, the number of uh, 600 of them, much bigger than the entire Pacific Island group of nations put together. 20 of my islands, if not 30 of them, are bigger than the islands of the Pacific Island nations, so to speak. So we're not a small island state, we are a big island country. The challenges in PNG has always been big. From a 5 billion Kina uh, economic base consistently in the last 44 years before we took office, it has grown somewhat at a small snail pace up to 79 billion, 80 billion Kina thereabouts. I want to say thank you very much at this juncture to the help we have continued to re receive from all the Australian governments and administrations since 1975. Australia has never sighed away or stayed away, despite some of the down times we've had, and they've always been with us every step of the way. Uh, every Papua New Guinean students and ministers visiting Papua New Guineans in the, in the house, step back with me and clap to all the Australians. <laughs> and so since then we've, we've come, and when we took office, uh, my uh, compatriot, the Honorable Ian Nixtaki, knows the statistics better than I do. We were, 80, we were under 80 billion kina in 2019. We were officially in recession in 2018. We had a negative 3% <coughs> recessed economy in 2018 when we took office. We went about restructuring and we were in the business of uh, getting the economy up and running. But COVID-19 descended on not just us, but every one of us that had a global economy contracts, contracts in the two place. But thankfully, we had good friends, Australia included, that assisted our economy. Uh, and we went into a deliberate deficit budget plan to make sure sufficient liquidity is flowing into economy using government budget to stimulate growth and an expansionary focus we embarked upon. Four years on, that pathway is proving some success. We were not reckless. We brought in IMF into the fray. Uh, you know, not everyone are friends of IMF, but we have no choice but to ensure that what we're doing is transparent and independent referee must be in the room. And so we deliberately brought into the picture IMF that stood with us every step of the way to, to give credibility to the numbers that Ian was posting every now and then. And, uh, and since then, we have, when I look back in 2024, as of last year when we went to prepare for 2024 fiscal year, our Tresla pronounced 111 billion kina economy. That effectively means in the last four hard years, at least at the macroeconomy level, we were able to post 
over 30 million kina growth in our macroeconomy space. That's something we've done, and I want to again say thank you to Australia, who've been an important part of us in our financing of a deficit budget space. You're able to come in, and we've been able to sustain right through. Today, I want to indicate to you, as Australian taxpayers, we're not reckless. IMF still remains in our economy and in our treasury. We're working on a fiscal consolidation pathway. Last year, we slashed our deficit by 1 billion kina. We're in a deficit slash continually. We hope to come back to a balanced budget, if not earlier than by 2027. And thereon going forward, Treasurer Staki has announced a 13-year fiscal plan that is working towards debt elimination. We have a fiscal, clear fiscal pathway that runs into 2030s. In between now and then, we're working our major resource projects. We have Papua LNG that is uh, uh, almost there. We have Pasca LNG. We have uh, uh, Pinyang LNG. And for those who are anti-LNGs, I just want to tell you, Papua New Guinea is carbon negative. Our 462,840 square kilometers of land, 70% <coughs> is forest cover. And so our sufficient forest cover ensures we are carbon negative. Currently, we emit only 10 million metric tons of CO2. Our absorption capacity is over 100 metric ton, million metric tons of CO2. We are carbon negative. So for those of you companies in Australia, if Australia is giving a hard time, bring your investment dollar into PNG. <laughs> you, have, you will be given an express lane with a green label, a green identity. But in any case, with these super projects lined up for us, by 2024 to 2038, we will have LNG construction industry running that will add to the construction dollar alone over $30 billion worth of construction activities in the LNG space. We will throw in on top a Wafi Gold, uh, gold Mine project and something close to my heart, the new program. Uh, many skeptics thought that the major investor, the second biggest mining company in the world, would set its gate on PNG runaway, but thank goodness, Barrick Gold Corporation, the Barrick Gold Limited, decided to hang around under 49% equity arrangements to them and a 51% equity arrangements to the PNG party. And for investors here, we will not chase you away. We know your return on investment. We will benchmark against global benchmarks and a competitive benchmark you operate inside. You make a return on your side of investment. We will make a return on our side of investment. POGRA, the second biggest gold mining company in the world, Barrick, has shown that we can negotiate for a better outcome. They sit on a minority shareholding. We sit on a majority selling. We've learned from Bougainville to not to look after landowners and to learn not to look after uh, the local authorities is quite disastrous. So I think the investors in PNG have seen that uh, they can do better deals with us and we're moving into this, this space. This will ensure that we secure the economic fundamentals of our country. Our resource base is sufficient and I want to give certainty to those of you through your tax dollars that support our budget. Uh, hopefully, this time, 10 years from today, we don't come knocking on you asking for uh, money to support our budget, but we're able to have enough resources so that you and me together contribute to keeping our part of planet Earth safe, secure from all, all manners of intrusion in as far as our democracy and our peace and sovereignty is concerned. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If PNG is strong economically, we assist you. If we're not strong, well, you keep on doing the, doing the support role in our entire region, and I, it will be eventually stressful on yourself. And so it is in your shared interest that PNG grows to be economically strong. And are we getting there? Last year, for instance, despite all these projects I mentioned not coming on board, through increasing systematic efficiency within ourselves, we were able to collect, or we are focusing to collect over 23 point. 4 billion kina in revenue this year. That is the highest ever level of revenue collections in our country. The last time I was finance minister, the revenue base was 13 billion kina. Uh, and it was not too far off. I was finance minister in 2018. The revenue base was 13 billion kina, 14 billion kina. Today, the revenue base this year will exceed 23 billion kina in, 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 in our terms. It is the highest ever. Uh, and that will be part of our 27 billion kina money plan for this year that the Treasurer handed down last year. In that, 
we have the highest ever parcel of investment to public infrastructure. Public infrastructure has been our focus simply because with key enabling infrastructures, we carry a modern economy and service delivery is much, much easier. So we have of that 27 billion kina, 10 billion kina parcel for our infrastructure plan in our country to ensure that government support to not just social sector, but more importantly, economic and key enabling infrastructures receive support and add to bolster our economy. I want to also indicate for those of you, because I speak to you as taxpayers, Papua New Guinea taxpayers and Australian taxpayers, and I am, I am, I am, I am uh, obliged to give you how we are spending our 27 billion kina budget, if it is worth your, your attention. PNG is investing record amounts in the education sector, allocating 6.6 .6 billion in, in 2024, 8.3% uh, increase. On top of this one, we are uh, investing in additional health workers, 840 of them, to go into our, 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 our health, work, worker, uh, uh, health, health workforce. We also bring more teachers into the picture. We want to educate every child in PNG in the direct education pathway as well as the alternate flexible pathway we've established in every child in PNG from now on must matriculate to year 12 so that they have an equal opportunity of 12 years of education to place themselves in a place of self-empowerment going forward. We aspire to have health services one hour within reach, whether it's by foot, by, by, by boat, by plane or by car, and we're working in this place. We're fixing Port Mosby uh, General Hospital for the first time for chronic issues. Last week, Sunday, I visited our cancer facility that is being built. This time next year, no more will PNG export medical patients elsewhere. We will have state-of-art cancer facility, state-of-art health facility, state-of-art kidney facility. This time next year, we envisage, I'm being very bold, hold me to my word, this time next year, we envisage to do kidney transplant in Port Mosby General Hospital. I made a place when I took office that by 2025, we don't want to export medical patients. Today I want to announce that we're receiving patients from Solomon Islands and other Pacific Island nations. They're coming to Port Mosby for heart and deep angiogram testings. And for me, corruption is seen from the context of economic preservation and gain. There is no point me growing the economy if the basket remains with so much sinkholes or holes for the matter. And so ICAC is being set up, it's functional. We also have uh, created an increasing space for additional judiciaries. Uh, up till 2023, the cap of our judiciary remained at 60 in a nation of over 12 million litigious people. Uh, you just can't have, you just can't have uh, 40 or 60 judges. We've now lifted the ceiling to 200, and I spoke with your Prime Minister earlier today. I don't mind the entire money meant to support us in the law and justice sector. Just pay your judges, pay your police, pay your magistrates, pay your uh, anti-corruption commissioners, uh, get them up there and fill in my law and justice sector space. We need that independence, we need that robustness, we need uh, capacity uh, inbuilt into our law enforcement structure, the full full, uh, uh, full uh, uh, law and justice sector intervention needs our help. And I'm happy to report to all of you in this presentation. Work in the law and justice sector is going on. It is not yet there. Uh, it will outlive me. The work will outlive me. But uh, I just uh, I, I want to wish that going forward, governments after me do not abandon the cause of strengthening the law and justice sector space, including the support to the anti-corruption agencies that we have set up. I quickly, I know my time is running, uh, I, I could see uh, my friend Julie trying to uh, stop me in, uh, in that in my, in my speech. Uh, she's got some questions, so I can respond to some of the questions, but I want to, uh, it will be, I know something close to your heart, you want to know where is PNG's place in the world. I spoke earlier on our, the fact that we straddle in the middle of Pacific and the Indo-Asia region. We do not take our place lightly. Our uh, democracy is entrenched and we will work, continue to entrench our democracy. We choose our partnership despite the overriding uh, foreign policy that my own party bathed at 1974, the friends to all, enemies to none foreign policy uh, that we maintain, but we have specific aspects of each 
nation we relate with. And those are principle based, some we have economic relations and some we have economic relations as well as uh, and, uh, principle based relationships and uh, those peculiar envelope of relationship we have with every nation will be maintained within the context of how we want to build a nation going forward. Last year we saw, uh, we received and hosted many leaders who came to our shores. They were gracious to come, the leaders from Fiji, France, India, Indonesia, Hungary, uh, as well as the United States, uh, and of course the Pacific Island leaders, including Australia and New Zealand. Those were visits that we received, and we know we will be receiving similar visits going forward. If you want to go to Asia, you pass through PNG. Whether you're going west or going north. If you want to go east to the Pacific, you pass through PNG. If you want to come south, uh, into deep south on planet Earth, in Australia and New Zealand, you come to PNG. You cannot ignore the fact that we are straddled right in the heart of the exciting part of planet Earth. And uh, we will be so unless someone drag us away from here, but uh, if we are dragged away, then as I told Parliament today, Julie, we stuck at the hips. <laughs> the Australasian continental plate joins us at the hip. Half of my country is, in fact, Australia, in the Australian continent. This, the Australian continental plate is half the southern part of my country. The other five plates, plate tectonics, uh, constitute the highlands and the Nugent Islands. And so we stuck with you here forever. We're not going anywhere else. <laughs> and uh, I want to say that uh, our democracy will be preserved. Our union and our relationship is something we don't take for lightly, take for granted. Uh, we know our place in the world and we know our place in the Pacific. In the, in the midst of many relationships, we will never compromise our democracy and our, our subscription to free economy, market economy, and the rule of common law of all. PNG continues to find membership in many global forums. We are active member of PIF, we are active member of uh, APEC, we are active member of the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, we are member of the Melanesian Spirit Group, uh, when, whenever our opinions are sought. We are transparent. We never play nations against each other. As a custom to Melanesians, we believe friends to all and enemies to none, DNA is all about transparency. For 50 years on, we'll be maturing as a nation, but we still carry our downsides. If you at ANU see in some areas of public policy that needs us to be, to, to be improving on, I can give you one certainty. James Marape and my team of leaders take all the criticisms we can take, and we are not offended by any criticism. So long as you offer alternate solutions, we are ready to listen and work to ensure we fix those problems that we have and, and, and carry through and we make PNG a better place. When PNG becomes a better place, then Australia will live in a better region. It's simple as that. We're looking forward to work with credible data and solutions to ensure PNG is better, Australia is better, Pacific is secured, and we all coexist for the next 50 years going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.